Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Birmingham. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and wherever you are today, you are welcome here. This day is traditionally our choir Sunday, and while this service is different, we want to celebrate our choir, see some of their faces this morning, and honor the challenges that the pandemic has brought to our music program. We are so appreciative of the choir members and music staff who each week work so diligently to gift us with their talents. As always, if you have technical difficulties, please call the church office and let us know. We have folks ready and willing to help. To all who are here this morning, welcome home. If you would like to participate or comment on our service, especially during the Circle of Lights, please use the chat feature in YouTube. We invite you along the way to comment on your participation. Tell us when you are lighting your chalice, when you are singing along, and share your joys and concerns when the time comes. We also invite you to send virtual hugs and waves to one another by using parentheses around someone's name. After church today, please join us in our Zoom room for coffee hour, small groups, and meetings. Please continue to watch your email for ways to connect to our community during this physical hiatus. If you are not on our list, please contact the church office. Now, please join me in welcoming Alabama Interfaith Power and Light as our Share the Plate recipient this month. Greetings, beloved. My name is Michael Malcolm, and I am the Executive Director of Alabama Interfaith Power and Light. I want to start off by saying thank you to Reverend Julie Conradi, also saying thank you to you as a congregation for welcoming me into your space. I'm a bit nervous right now, and so I'll be reading off of paper because I'm just not used to speaking to a camera. I'm very used to speaking to live faces and live voices and receiving that feedback. So bear along with me as I am more reliant on my paper than I normally would be. Alabama Interfaith Power and Light is a statewide program whose mission is to be faithful stewards of creation by responding to climate change through the advocacy of policies or for policies that promote environmental justice, energy conservation, energy efficiency, and renewable energy, all from a faith-based perspective. We believe that people should have the right to clean air, clean water, and a healthy life. Since being in Alabama, I found that these rights are disproportionately available. I found that the energy rates are egregious and the pollution that it leaves behind is extremely deadly. Alabama IPL primarily works with communities of faith to meet the needs of its congregants that they serve. We offer energy efficiency workshops for home and houses of worship. In February, we launched our interfaith statement on energy and equity. You can find this sign on by going to our website at www.alabamaipl.org. Again, that's www.alabamaipl.org. So far, we have 900,000 signatures and would love to have you also. We're guided by a love ethic that says, one, it is immoral for anyone to bear a disproportionate burden of toxic health effects from waste and pollution. Two, clean, affordable, renewable energy is a holy goal worthy of pursuit by people of all faiths. 
And last, my brothers and my sisters, our individual and societal energy choices, the renewable versus the non-renewable, the equitable versus the non-equitable, should be an expression of our individual faiths. During this time of righteous indignation for historical ill treatment of communities of color and especially us who are African descended, we are meeting the needs of community through our work with community leaders. We recently launched We Care Alabama, where we are providing COVID relief by working with faith and community leaders throughout the state with supply necessities to ease the dis-ease of overburdened communities. This has come in the form of supplying food, paying utility bills, and helping bail those out who are now fighting for justice, equity, and inclusion. We've also worked through Be a Blessing Birmingham to ensure that the part of the community who experience homelessness and poverty still have the right to soap and water. We've done this through supplying portable sinks to our brothers and our sisters in our community. Listen, our vision is simple. Our vision is this. We want a just and equitable world, period. During this difficult time, we simply offer to you peace, love, and light. The prelude prepares us for worship.
Here is a reading from Henry Van Dyke. Use what talents that you possess. The woods would be very silent if no birds sang there. Except the birds who sang the best. If you have a chalice with you at home, please light it now and type lighting my chalice into the chat feature. We light this chalice in thanksgiving for those who have given so generously of their time and expertise so that we can all be together during these challenging times. We also thank Jonathan Fleming who recorded the choir selections you'll hear this morning. As we light this flame, please hold these talented and generous people in your hearts. Please join me in the affirmation found on your order of service and in the chat. Join me during the italicized words. Our affirmation today is written by Jacob Trapp, a 20th century Unitarian Universalist minister and a poet. To worship. To worship is to stand in awe under a heaven of stars, before a flower, a leaf in sunlight, or a grain of sand. To worship is to be silent, receptive, before a tree astir with the wind or the passing shadow of a cloud. To worship is to work with dedication and with skill. It is to pause from work and listen to a strain of music. To worship is to sing with the singing beauty of the earth. It is to listen through a storm to the still small voice within. Worship is a loneliness seeking communion. It is a thirsty land crying out for rain. Worship is kindred fire within our hearts. It moves through deeds of kindness and through acts of love. Worship is the mystery within us reaching out to the mystery beyond. It is an inarticulate silence yearning to speak. It is the window of the moment open to the sky of the eternal. Let us join together in singing the hymn found in your order of service. If you'd like, type singing together in the chat.
Good morning. Most of you know that the choir service is my very favorite one of the year. That's no real surprise to anyone, I'm sure. I love the fact that we get to sing several anthems as opposed to just one in a normal service. But what I love most are the months of preparation that we do to get ready for this special day. Every year I'm flooded with volunteers who so willingly give of their time and talents to do parts of this service. Over the years, many have written words, especially for this special day, to describe what singing and choral music mean to them. You see, singing in a choir is a pretty intense experience. You are doing something at exactly the same time as a group of other people to achieve one common goal, creating something beautiful. How rare is it these days to be in sync with such a large group of other people and to do it willingly without getting a paycheck at the end? Not only are we singing notes and rhythms and words exactly at the same time in exactly the right place, but our voices and even our bodies are vibrating together in the process. Singing in a choir is an experience like no other. So I'm sure you can imagine that this year's choir service is a little bittersweet. Because of COVID-19, we are not able to meet together to either rehearse or perform and that is definitely the bitter part. The pieces we are singing for you today were pre-recorded and were voted on by the choir members to be included in today's service. One unfortunate side note, we're sad that we're not able to sing our very favorite piece for you today. The composer of the piece chose to make some offensive comments on social media this week regarding the protests against racial injustice happening around our country and, and in our city. I'm telling you this on this happy occasion to point out that our choir, like the entire UUCB, chooses only to act in ways that promote our seven principles. And this certainly includes the choral music we choose to sing. While we are disappointed we can't sing our favorite piece for you, we are certainly proud of the ones we have chosen. What we miss deeply is singing them together as a group in the moment for you, our beloved congregation. We look forward to being able to do that again as soon as possible. Congregation, I want you to know how hard it is for me personally not to get to work with this amazing group of people every week. The greatest joy in my life is taking all of these unique individuals and helping them form into a cohesive unit to present a beautiful musical message to you each week. But I promise to stay on top of the science so that we can get back to doing what we love as soon as it's safe to do so. I will strive to be a leader in brainstorming with other choir directors to think of new and exciting ways that we can make music together safely. We may all have to learn a new level of patience, but it will happen. We will sing together again. Thank you. Our church is supported by those who call our church home and by those who support the efforts of our church to change our world for the better. We share our cash plate every Sunday with organizations whose work reflects UU values to care for marginalized persons, advocate for real and systemic change, defend our environment, and promote justice and equity for all. This month's Share the Plate recipient is Alabama Interfaith Power and Light, whose mission is to be faithful stewards of creation by responding to climate change through the promotion of environmental justice, energy conservation, energy efficiency, and renewable energy from a faith perspective. During this time of social distancing and online worship, please know that church expenses continue. Therefore, we very much appreciate your continuing to pay your pledge or offer your donation by either mailing a check to the church office or by using PayPal or Venmo. Our Venmo account is at UUCBHAM. Please designate whether your offering is for UUCB or Alabama Interfaith Power and Light. Thank you for your generous support of our church and our Share the Plate recipient. May we give in love and hope.
Today, we lift up in solidarity the family and friends of George Floyd, whose tragic death has reverberated around our country in transformative ways, challenging us in the ways that we treat people of color, especially black persons, in our diverse society. May we honor his death by remembering and speaking out that black lives matter, and may we care for persons of color in our congregation and our community by checking in and listening to how they are during these traumatic times. We continue to lift up those ill from the pandemic, those who are quarantined, and those who are struggling with all the challenges this virus brings. Using the chat feature in YouTube, by speaking aloud or by hearing it in your heart, please give voice to what is on your heart today. My handy iPad dictionary says that a musical rest is a time of silence between tones. So silence defines the musical rest, but there is music in it. When we come to a rest as we sing, silently we keep the beat. The music within us keeps moving. We welcome the pause. We take a breath. A musical rest can prepare us for change, a change of thought, or a change of key. It might be a signal for a new mood, or maybe a stronger sound. Sometimes in life, we have times of forced breaks from the melodies of our living. These rests are not of our choosing or of our liking. It is difficult when these times of dashed dreams, of sickness and separation, of staying at home, of limited opportunities, interrupt our chosen paths. At these challenging times of being physically apart, we sing on together. As we do, we search with hope to find the possibilities born in the rest.
Will the children please come forward? Today, for our time for all ages, we are celebrating one of our Unitarian Universalist rites of passage, the bridging ceremony, for one of our graduating seniors, Mary Elisa Wagner. This ritual marks the moment in our church where Mary Elisa goes from being a part of the youth group to part of the young adult group. We also know that many of you are making transitions this summer to a new grade, a new teacher, even a new school, and for some of us, a new way of doing school entirely. We honor this transition in your lives by sharing your school photos from this last school year, concluding with our bridging ceremony for Mary Elisa. Enjoy. Today is our bridging ceremony for Mary Elisa Wagner. We honor her among us, she who is stepping beyond and away and toward. Today, we share in her journey and encourage her discovery. Today, we welcome your energy and offer you a place to grow. Today, we celebrate your hopes and dreams. Come live, breathe, thrive, and rejoice. Your time is now. Today we applaud you. you for all you have been, for all you are now, and for all you will be. Today marks an ending so that I may begin again, to hope and do and learn and be. We, we have, have seen, seen you grow, grow from, from acorn, acorn to oak tree. tree. We, we cherish, cherish you every stage of childhood. In sorrow and joy, we see that the world needs you, and your journey begins. We, we honor you for all you have been and all you are now and all you will be. We pledge our love and support to you always. Today you cross this bridge. Go now and explore with wonder. We will support and nurture you. You are the future. Today you cross this bridge. Go now and make choices that make you happy. 
We will support you and nurture you. You are amazing. Today you cross this bridge. Be patient and hopeful. We will support and nurture you. You are an inspiration. Today I cross this bridge and join in fellowship. Let me grow, but don't let me go. Together we share a special place. Together we learn, together we love, together we grow. Mary Lisa Wagner, we bless you today. May your mind be on fire with wonder and wisdom. May your heart be aflame with love for this life. May your hands be ignited with purpose. And may your spirit be aglow with courage and compassion. Mary Lisa, you are a light unto the world and you carry your, our steadfast love with you wherever you go. In honor of your bridging today, we offer you a rose, which still contains its thorns, because adulthood will contain thorns for you, as it does for all of us. But we hope that we have sent you along with support and love and skills and confidence that you will need to, so that you may have whatever you wish in the world ahead of you. We wish you all the best. Amen and blessed be. Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you on this choir Sunday. The choir's last performance was March the 8th. We sang one more Redeemer. We could certainly use a Redeemer now. The very next day, Music Share let us sing along at North Hill Nursing and Rehab after making sure that it was okay with the staff there. That Thursday, the 12th, we had a rehearsal for a Vesper service that was planned for the 19th. But even as we were practicing, the board was making the difficult decision to move all church activities online. And it's a good thing that choir and music share did quit meeting in person. We've since learned that singing together, drawing and expelling those deep breaths is one of the surest ways to spread the virus. The speed with which our lives have been upended has been mind boggling. At first, it was sort of like a staycation. It was a little weird, but I stuck with my daily routine. I canceled the one trip I had planned and I started catching up on gardening and overdue household chores. And I couldn't complain, and I still can't. I was grateful that I didn't have to worry about losing a job or having a job that required me to work in an unsafe environment, and grateful that I had enough toilet paper to see me through the shortages. But I missed choir. I missed music share. And I missed singing with my mom, who lives where visitors are not allowed at least not for now. Virtual choir is likely to be the norm for the near future. Our choir sang with other UU churches across the state and North Florida for the May 31st service. It was great watching it. And we made up about a third of the combined choir. But because of the technology required, not everyone was able to participate. And for those of us who did, it was not really an easy or enjoyable experience. There was no synchrony in real time, no feeling of connection with other singers or with the audience. In fact, it was pretty clumsy. Wearing earbuds, trying to read tiny lyrics while juggling two devices, one for the accompaniment that we were listening to and one for our recording. And looking into the camera, instead of the smiling faces of the congregation. And the process for merging those voices together with current technology is also not an easy process. I'm sure that software will be advancing in the near future to make that process easier, but it's never going to be the same, not for us and not for you. 
Other than that one virtual choir experience, our choir time has been replaced by an interesting mix of music theory lessons, performances by choir members, and some of Jim's friends from the Alabama Symphony, and plenty of socializing. The one silver lining is that in Zoom meetings, we do get to see each other's faces more. In a normal choir practice, we're singing in rows side by side, and we're watching Jim. So we don't really see people's faces all that much, but still singing shoulder to shoulder with other singers, blending our voices into one is a very communal experience and I'm eager to return to it. If it hadn't been for the choir and the interest that it sparked in me and the many things that I've learned there, I would never have had the courage to join the jam group that evolved into the outreach program we call Music Share, spelled with two U's, of course. For the past two and a half years, we've been leading sing-alongs for those in retirement communities. And now we find that we ourselves are shut-ins, so we're having sing-alongs for ourselves over Zoom. It's a little awkward, but we've managed to make it work. We're revisiting the songs that we've practiced and sung in the past and we volunteer to be the song leader for our favorites. Because of the time lag, everyone except for the song leader has to be muted. So it's like a solo for the song leader and a duet for the rest of us. We're singing together, just miles apart. Music Share's forte is folk songs, and many of them are about separation and loneliness. And the funny thing is that hearing them and singing them somehow brings us comfort. I think that sometimes the surest path out of misery is to just let ourselves wallow in it for a while. Sort of like Neil Diamond sang in his 1972 hit, Song Sung Blue. Me and you are subject to the blues now and then, but when you take the blues and make a song, you sing them out again. Words alone can often soothe us and music without lyrics also brings comfort. But words set to music, that's comfort on steroids. You can hear music's emotion, even when the lyrics are in another language, even when it's instrumental and not sung. Musical phrases mimic not only the rhythms and inflections of human speech, but also of wordless human cries, shouts of ecstasy, groans of pain, Psychologists have pointed out that tonal languages in particular, such as Chinese, where the pitch conveys some meaning, are closely related to music. And the way we talk to babies is lilting in any language. Some researchers believe that our species probably sang before we spoke. Exactly how the brain circuitry works for processing music and languages is still not entirely clear, but the idea that we have a strict divide between a rational left brain and a creative right brain has been debunked. Neuroimaging suggests that our systems for these functions overlap. And maybe that's why people with speech impediments are often able to sing even when speaking is difficult. Carly Simon and Mel Tillis are both stutterers and singers. Why should singing be easier? Maybe it's because musical sounds are the root and soul of language and probably the way our distant ancestors express themselves. So it's no wonder we sing when we're happy and no wonder we sing when we're sad. Hospice chaplain Chris Sikora, in a recent New York Times opinion, echoed the thoughts of not just choristers, but all of us who miss live music. He said, if we're going to survive this pandemic, we need music more than ever. There is nothing else that can meet us in our heartbreak, elevate our spirits, move us to laughter, and let us dream in the way that music can. Locked down in our houses, uncertain when this pandemic will end, we have to keep dreaming of days ahead. We need love songs. We need songs about hugs and physical touch. We need songs about all the simple things we never knew we were taking for granted as we blew through life. 
Let these songs fuel our dreams and embolden hope. The soundtrack of these times needs your chorus. And I would just add that the soundtrack of these times needs a lot of hopeful music. One of the songs that the choir was planning to sing in April was Light of a Clear Blue Morning by Dolly Parton. Alyssa Zeta had sent me a video link in which her twin sister was singing it with a university chamber choir. I loved it. I sent the link to Jim and he loved it and he ordered the music. Our choir has not yet had a chance to practice it, let alone sing it. But when we do, it will be with intense feeling, like Kimberly sings it. Let us join in singing the hymn found in your order of service, hymn number 108, My Life Flows On. If you'd like, type singing together in the chat.
Though we now extinguish this flame, let us tend it in our hearts as a symbol of hope. Hope for an end to state-sanctioned brutality. Hope for a recognition of our common humanity. And hope for a united resolve to make things better. With hope, we can do the work that needs to be done. May we honor the power of music and the transformative and challenging acts of being together in community, both digital and physical, as we go forth this week. May we speak out for those who have been silenced, and may we silence ourselves to make room for others to speak. May you feel loved and in the heart of our community until we are joyfully reunited in person.